No, it's not easy. It isn't. Every house that I've ever designed, it really isn't a sit down, scratch it out, and be done with it and, and go, to, go to production. There's a lot of thought. I mean, there's a lot of thought that goes into the models that, that, that I've designed. It's not a one shot, scratch it out and go for it. Um, think it through. I think some of the common mistakes when I see designs, and I get people will send me, you know, in a lot of different forms, you know, whether it's a paper towel or, you know, on a scratch paper, their designs. They look at the design, okay, wait a minute, I got eight and a half feet that I can play with here. And they don't take into consideration you have walls. So, you know, really be aware of the, the actual usable space that you have within those walls for a bathtub or your bed. And know those sizes. I mean, a lot of times, I mean, you got to look at, you know, What's the size of a queen bed? 60 by 80 inches. You know, what's the size of a twin or a single or a king bed? You know, or a sofa that you want to put into that living room. So just be conscientious of those actual dimensions and what your usable space is. So I think I think that's that's a big part of it. Because a lot of times, you know, I'll get, you know, I, I people think they can put these huge tubs in here and you know, do these gigantic refrigerators. And I think the another component is wheel wells. The wheel well is the part that comes into the tiny house that your tires and axles are, you know, and on the outsides. And they're usually two thirds of the way back. You need to be conscientious of, of those. I mean, because you, I, I don't anyway want to put doors over the top of a wheel well. If you think about it, that's a step. And it comes into your tiny house Mm, maybe as much as 10 inches or so, and it can be anywhere from eight to 12 inches off the floor. That's a big step. You know, I wouldn't want to put doors and, 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 you know, sliding glass doors or, you know, an entry over that space because it's a tripping hazard. So be aware of that, you know, build around it. I build cabinets around it. I build staircases over them. And sometimes you can't avoid it. They're exposed. So just be conscientious and aware of the fact that they're there. The other thing is, you know, consider what, how are you going to build? What materials are you going to use? Are you going to frame your tiny house, you know, with metal studs? Or are you going to use wood? You know, what are you doing as a roof? I mean, are you going to run a asphalt shingle, a rubber roof, fiberglass? I mean, there's a lot of decisions to be made in terms of these materials, and there's and there's costs involved in each one of those. So. Just be conscientious of of what that is and the weight that that these different components are going to add to the structure. I.e., you do a, a composition roof, which are shingles. They're heavy. They're going to add a substantial amount of weight to your tiny house, and they can pose a problem in terms of blow off. They can fly off your tiny house as they're going down the road. You know how do you secure them? How do you make sure it's going to work? That's why we use metal. We use metal roof. We use metal roofing. Um, you know, it's a 40-year product, and chances are it's not going to fly off.